Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 717th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Just to say, I want to show this battle because of two main things. The first thing is, it's a very rare clan versus clan battle. Okay, how often do you see a clan versus clan battle these days on the modern uh, RTW battlefield? Plus, there's an old ambush tactic in this game that I haven't seen for many, many years, maybe 15, 16 years. And this old school, old fashioned ambush that you're going to see during the course of this battle, it really takes me back in time and it'll kind of like take you back in time as well, hopefully, when you see this, um, this ambush that happens during the course of the battle. So I hope you enjoy this battle. As I say, it's a clan versus clan, and you're going to see an old school ambush. As you can see, it's fought on my favourite map, the Germanic Forest map. As we've talked about this map many, many times before, with the big open plains, if you want to um, fight out in the open, or if you want to hide your units in the woods and plan those nasty ambushes that we've uh, seen in the past. Plus, if you bring a barbarian faction like Germania, you've got the winter bonus, and you've got the woods bonus as well. So as I say, this map map's got a lot going for it and I think that's why um, it is my favourite map. There's uh, so much on it. Okay, our first teammate is Brother Member Barky Man. Now Barky Man's got four spear units, three night raiders, five chosen axemen, three berserkers and five cavalry. Okay, so just to let you know that infantry wise, including his berserkers, he's got 15 infantry which is quite a lot for a Germanic army. You don't often see that, do you? Now remember, the, the rules of this game we've changed. There's no archers allowed in this battle, okay? So just for something a bit different, we ban slingers or archers from this battle. And as I say, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see how Barkley Man does with his Germanic army. Okay, so as I say, rules, no archers. There, you know, you've got the Night Raiders. Remember these guys um, are good infantry in their own right, but they also bring a big fear factor, sapping the morale from enemy troops, making them more susceptible to routing. And then, of course, you've got the Chosen Axemen with their excellent morale and effective against armour axes. And they can cut a wide swathes through heavily armoured troops like Roman infantry. So it'll be interesting to see how he uses them. And then you've got the spear warband units here now you don't see these bought to the uh, modern 2023 battlefield that much uh, these days but in the past i've seen armies of these um backed up with their berserkers they are they can be quite effective obviously they're anti-cavalry because they're spear units but they can also hold up infantry units as well so they are a bit i think underestimated units and then of course you've got the infamous berserkers with their two hit points their um effective against armor maces and their big fear factor the sapping of morale that they can do as well and then we've got the gothic cavalry there check out their specifications you'd be surprised on how good this cavalry is so as i say this is barkley man's germanic army with 15 infantry including his berserkers so that's a, a lot of infantry i think for a germanic army you don't usually see that many so it'd be interesting to see how well that does during the course of the battle our next teammate is Brotherhood member JGP. Now he's got the bog standard 31k Roman army of 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. And remember the reason that's a bog standard 31k Roman army is because it's so effective and so efficient as it has been for many, many years. And that's what he's brought to the battlefield there. Now our next teammate is somebody who's called himself um, OTD Chinzig there, but is in fact Scorpion King SR. Now, Scorpion King has got 10 infantry, 1 peasant, and 6 cavalry. Okay, but also, um, that is not the whole of his army, as you will see a little bit later on. This is something to do with that uh, old school ambush um, you're going to see later on um, in this battle. But to, just to say, all you see is not all you get with this particular army. Okay? And our last teammate is myself, Spartan Commander's got his very old Roman army of 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, 13 infantry, 6 cavalry. So there's our team. As I say, this is a, a friendly clan v clan battle, but still very competitive. And here is the other team. We have GOTW Biatch, and he's got the bog standard 31k Roman army of 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. 
Okay, so he's got 14 infantry and 6 cavalry there. The bog standard 31k Roman army. So effective, so efficient. Their next teammate is GOTW Romex. Now, Romex has got 13 pikes and 5 chariots and a peasant unit. Okay, so there you go. He's put his peasant unit out in front of his main battle formation there. Let to soak up um, enemy pilers or enemy missiles, arrows as well. But of course, there's no archers in this game. Okay, quick look at the upgrades on his uh, pikemen there. And I think you'll see that his forward units have got seven upgrades on. An experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. Remember, our men have got to fight all the way down those pikes to kill the man on the other end. A very tall order, that is. And let's say seven upgrades there. If you move further back in his battle formation you'll see that his next line has got eight upgrades on two experienced stripes gold shield gold attack okay and then his third battle line has also got eight upgrades two experienced stripes gold shield gold attack there okay so we've got staggered upgrades through his battle formation there his uh, rear units are all eight upgrades there two experienced stripes gold shield gold attack and his forward units with just a stripe gold shield gold attack they're going to make first contact with the enemy take the pilers hopefully weaken the enemy and then he can bring his better upgraded infantry through there to finish off the weakened infantry i think that's the thinking behind that battle formation there and then of course you've got his chariots there Okay, now remember these chariots got a big attacking factor, they've got big morale sapping abilities, but if they run amok they become both menace, uh, a menace to both friend and foe alike, as we've seen in a lot of battle videos, um, and they seem to be stronger in a muck mode, and don't forget when they're in a muck mode they kill both friend and foe alike. Um, and that's why it's a real double-edged sword bringing chariots. Um, I would urge people to think about that quite a lot because they can be such devastating. They can be so devastating, but they can be so devastating against their own team as well if they run amok. Okay, their third teammate is GOTW Leanbob. Now Leanbob's got the bog standard 31k Roman army of 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, so he's got 14 infantry, 6 cavalry. Once again, to remind you, the reason that's the bog standard 31k Roman army is because it's so effective and so efficient. That's why so many people bring it. And let's see if we can find their last teammate in the woods there. And, oh, there we are. And that is GOTW Biggest. Now, Biggest has got the same as, um, Lean bod, 14 infantry and 6 cavalry, the bog standard 31k Roman army. And just to remind everybody that Scorpion King SR is an honorary member of the Brotherhood. He's been an honorary member of the Brotherhood for about 15 years. So this is a friendly yet very competitive battle against GOT and the Brotherhood. Just to say, say GOTW beat us last game, so we're after a bit of revenge for this game. Okay, it's very, very early stage of the battle. You'll see that Scorpion King here has put his cavalry out here, looking very exposed and very isolated and looking like it could well be easily attacked by the enemy troops. Well, this is part of the, the trap. Um, that uh, that he is laying here very old school trap there and what he's waiting for is for the enemy cavalry or chariots even maybe to attack him now as I say this is um, a, an ambush if you like that I haven't seen for maybe 15 or 16 years so you need to keep an eye on this side of the battlefield if you notice here I've got my cavalry at the back okay now what I needed to do was keep my cavalry far enough away from his cavalry so not to put off them charging into him but close enough for me to intervene when needed okay so um as i say there um this is a, a an ambush that uh, i haven't seen for many many years there and scorpion king's resurrecting this uh this ambush tactic um so uh, as i say from maybe 15 or 16 years ago we'll see if it's still effective on the 2023 battlefield there just to say as a lot of you will know i've put a lot of older battles on from our archives over the last few games but this is a modern battle only fought last night friday so the ink's not kind of dry on the paper yet it's such a new battle so as i say i've been putting older ones on um for the last few games here but this is a brand new battle here this is a nice tactic by bod here if you notice that he's got a town watch unit and he's chasing a uh, scorpion king's um peasant unit away there with that particular unit that town watch unit. you don't see town watch used very often on the 31k battlefield very old school tactic there by lean bod so um 
As I say, uh, nice to see uh, GOTW four members on there. As I say, it's GOTW against the Brotherhood. And uh, as I say, a very friendly rivalry, but this battle will be very competitive. And as I said, they beat us in the last game. So for this game, we're actually after a little bit of revenge if we could get it. But uh, as I say, we're up against four very good players here. So um, this should be a really good cracking battle for you to watch. And as I say, it's a brand new one, only fought last night, Friday. You'll see JGP moving his SBQR army back there as the enemy Julii units were moving in towards him. But once again, just like to show you here, look at Scorpion King's cavalry there, looking very isolated. He's probably going to move them even further away. There you go. Can you see he's even moving them further away from his allies, so they look even more isolated. Do you notice I'm moving my infantry away from his cavalry as well? So his cavalry looks more and more isolated all the time. Now I'm thinking the enemy team are thinking, look at Scorpion King leaving his cavalry there. Come on, we've got to hit him. We've got to take those cavalry out, which is exactly what Scorpion King wants. Now, remember, it's going to be an ambush, old-school ambush on that left flank uh, any time soon there. Right, let's just pause the game for a second here. Okay, so you can see our Germanic ally there with his 15 infantry. Okay, now he wants to hit any of the enemy Roman armies okay he wants to steer clear of Pontus because like we've said on many battle videos spears and pikes kill barbarian troops very quickly so he will want to stay away from those Pontus pikes if he possibly can with the bulk of his infantry his spearmen he may well try and put up against those pikemen that might be worthwhile having a go but his other infantry he will need to keep away from those pikes so he'll want to go for the enemy Roman troops there Okay, so watch the um, the tactic there from our uh, Germanic ally. As I say, remember the rules in this game, we've changed a little bit. No archers, no slingers in this game. Okay, so um, that's just something for, you know, just something a little bit different there. So, um, as I say here, you can see the enemy um, Brutio troops slowly but steadily moving towards us here. And as I say, our Germanic ally will be looking for an opportunity to hit one of those Roman armies. But as I say, he will, in general, stay clear of the Pontus pikemen there. Okay. So as I say, just look at Scorpion King's SBQR cavalry there. The enemy must be thinking, oh my gosh, look at that cavalry. We're going to have to... I'm surprised they haven't hit his cavalry yet with the chariots and cavalry that they've got at their disposal there. Can you see now? You can see the Brutii cavalry moving across now and you can see the chariots moving across now i think scorpion king is going to back off here he's going to draw them if they get closer to him i think he's going to draw them further away from um, from their infantry there if uh, if he can okay so here you can see unfortunately the um player here the brutio player there has got um an expanding glitch can you see that biggest has got an expanding glitch so if you notice here I'm moving my infantry back I don't want any cheap kills I've turned my auto fire off and I'm just moving my infantry back I say don't want any cheap kills against a glitched army okay remember that because uh, imagine if it was your army that glitched right over here you can see the enemy coming towards Scorpion now like I said can you see Scorpion King is backing off okay so we got enemy Brutii cavalry and those chariots coming in on Scorpion King now I need you to watch this very closely here as I say this is an old school ambush right now I've got my cavalry here ready to throw in when ready okay now, as Scorpion King said, we haven't seen an ambush like this for many, many years. Okay, just watch that area there. And as I say, do you remember when we looked at Scorpion's army, I said to you, not all what you see is what you get. Okay, because you couldn't see all of his army. Now, get ready for this. Watch. Watch very closely there. There. Did you see those units appear out of nowhere? Okay, these are the Arcani. How often do you see the Arcani on the 31k battlefield? Just for your information, they've got a 12 attack and 2 hit points. 
and they can hide anywhere as you can see the moment they start moving they hide wherever they are on the battlefield and this is an old tactic that was used many years ago okay so that now what he'll do he'll throw those arcani into attacking the enemy cavalry and then he'll turn his own cavalry onto them okay watch this this is an old school really old-fashioned tactic you don't see very often there can you see he can charge his arcani into the enemy cavalry and then charge his own cavalry in as well and there goes his cavalry up bang as they charge in there there's the arcani look and as I say, they've got 2 hit points and 12 attack. I notice he's only got 3 upgrades on them, so I'm guessing he's put gold attack on them there. But there you can see he's charged his cavalry in as well. He drew the enemy cavalry and archer, um, and chariots towards the Arcani and then turned and faced him. you notice that my cavalry is coming in as well. Remember I had my cavalry locked and loaded because Scorpion King had already explained to me his tactics here. And bang! As my cavalry smashes in there just look at that now if we can draw other cavalry units other um enemy cavalry units over here as well we could at least weaken them is what we were thinking there but here you can see some more enemy chariots coming across okay so i think we've we've routed most of the enemy uh, chariots and a uh, cavalry that were there here's a nice bit of support here by barkley man bringing some dramatic cavalry over okay so that was a nice bit of support there he's brought those cavalry units over from the other flank there but as you can see our initial um tactics here that initial ambush of our carni and our cavalry smashing into the enemy team has routed most of the cavalry and the chariots that attacked us there okay so remember these are kind as i say he's got 12 attack but i think he's put um, more um attack on them there you can see their chariots have run them up there as well and as I say, that is an old school, old fashioned ambush. When was the last time you saw Arcanite on a 31k battlefield? I'm guessing many, many years ago. Now here you'll see, I think it's Lean Bod bringing his um, Brutii cavalry over to this flank as well. So maybe it might be time for us to pull back. We've uh, taken out the chariots and cavalry that was in front of us there. So it might be a good idea to pull back. But knowing Scorpion King, with his aggressive attacking... Um, specifications if you like because that's what uh, he is he's really attacking and aggressive he may well throw his arcani and charge his cavalry and again there you are you can see he's still got a couple of arcani units he's throwing in there but can you notice anything here that may you know persuade us not to attack i can see a couple of things there they've thrown infantry in there can you see there they've thrown biggest has put some infantry units in there with lean bods cavalry so that's one reason why i don't really want to attack with my cavalry there with that infantry plus look how close they are to the rest of that infantry that can be brought into the fray so um as i say it might be a good idea for us to have backed off there because uh, you don't really want to get involved with fighting um, infantry if we can help it. But there you are, Scorp's gone in with his Arcana and cavalry. And I'm going to charge in with my cavalry as well. Look, um, bang! As we smash in there. Look at the impact of that uh, Scipio cavalry of mine really pushing into that. But can you see that the enemy are bringing more infantry over? And then there's that fresh Julio cavalry coming over as well. Okay, so you can see this infantry coming in here. They got several infantry. They got at least three units of infantry plus their cavalry, plus this fresh July um, infant, uh, cavalry coming across as well. So I think it would be time now to um, that old saying: discretion is a better part of valor. And we just need to pull away now. We've done the damage that we wanted to. Okay, as we move across the battlefield here, just to have a have a look at the battlefield here, you can see what I'm thinking about doing is bringing my infantry round the flank there. I uh, just have to wait and see what happens there. But that's what uh, what I was thinking at the time. Over here you'll see that um, Lean Bod is facing Scorpion King's units there. You'll see Scorpion King's put a couple of his forward units into Testudo. Remember this is a, a real formation that the Romans used to uh, use back in the day. Look at the defence. It's got missiles just bounce off those shields. Really good defensive um formation that the testudo and jgp's facing biatch over there on our right flank okay so there's um a lot going on at the moment and you've got here barkley managed germanic army here he's just keeping him at the back so he can strike in any direction from that particular position so it'll be interesting to see what happens but over here i think with the enemy reinforcements coming in and as i said discretion is a better part of valor and i think we need to pull back now um, otherwise i think we could um we could lose a lot of our cavalry so if you notice there i'm starting to pull my skippy cavalry back out of the fray there as that julie cavalry smashes in there and 
bang and it smashes in there let's see but you can see scorpion kings spqr cavalry and those are arcana units i think have been routed now so as i say i'm pulling my cavalry back out we have definitely weakened their cavalry which is what we wanted to do and i think we've um made a couple of their chariots run amok as well so uh, we didn't do too badly there with that old school ambush on that left flank right let's pause the game for a second here okay you'll see that i'm moving my infantry over my Scipio infantry over i'm going to attack these units here with my infantry uh, the only trouble is if i do that i think the rest of that uh, brutio infantry are probably going to attack me so we'll just have to see now if you notice here can you see i'm moving away from that brutio cavalry chasing me and now i'm turning on them bang turn on there try and damage them as much as i can before they get that uh, fresh julii cavalry over onto me Okay, I want to damage this Brutii Cavalry that was just chasing me there and then pull away before that Julii Cavalry smashes into me. I need to move away quickly now. I've damaged and routed a couple of those Brutii units, but you can see that Julii Cavalry and some other Brutii Cavalry coming in on me there. Um, I think I've had a couple of my Cavalry units routed there, but I'm just going to run, keep running away now. I don't want to fight those uh, units there. Okay, so as I say, over here now, you'll see the Brutii Cavalry. See that two Cavalry units charging into my infantry? And bang, as I smashed in there. I've got some more Brutii infantry coming in on my flank there. So you can see now, now make no mistake, I've put my troops on auto fire. So there's going to be a lot of pilots going into those attacking troops there. But as I say here, you can see Brutii Cavalry coming in on my flank. Okay, so let's pause the game for a second here. So here you can see that Bigus is now attacking me very aggressively with his um, Brutii infantry. Um, you can see that Julii cavalry and some Brutii, enemy Brutii cavalry coming in on my flank there. So what I need to do is start to turn units to face the threat, especially my general, to face the threat of those enemy un cavalry units coming in on my flank. But you can see here my um, army is being heavily attacked there. And as we move across the battlefield here, you will see that Lean Bod is attacking Scorpion King SR's SPQR units here. Okay, very aggressive. As we know, Lean Bod, very, very aggressive player. Always has been ever since I've known him. Over on the right flank, though, it looks a bit quiet, doesn't it? Where JGP's SPQR units are. And, of course, you've got those Germanic cavalry of um, Barclay Man there. Now, he may well be looking to get behind the enemy troops or just hiding that cavalry in the woods, ready to strike into the flank of those um, enemy troops later on. But as I say, on our right flank, very quiet at the moment. Everything seems to be going on on our left flank here. Okay, so, can you see that Julii cavalry? Looks like it's going to strike in on my general. So I've turned my general to face the threat, and I've turned other units to face that to enemy cavalry threat that may well be coming in on our left flank. Okay, so I've got units there ready to neutralize any cavalry attack coming in on that left flank. But just look at that number of Brutio infantry attacking my troops. There you are. As I say, that cavalry may well be ready to charge in, but I've got units facing that. But just look at the number of the Brutio infantry pushing in on my troops. As I say, I've put all my troops on auto fire now, so they will be shooting loads of, uh, throwing loads of pilers into that enemy Brutio. Um, army that is attacking me but you can see just look at the numbers of those Brutio infantry attacking now over here I've got some of my battle damaged um, routed cavalry that I've now rallied okay and what I'd like to do is take that cavalry in behind those Brutio infantry that are attacking my infantry with a view to smash in behind them there okay that's what I'm going to look to do with my um, cavalry very battle damaged cavalry there but as I say, just look at the number of Brutii um, infantry attacking me there. Now, if you notice there, you'll see um, Barky Man has done a really good job. He's brought his um, troops over to help. Right here, you can see, as I say, I'm facing that uh, danger of those enemy cavalry coming in on that flank. I've, as I say, turned some units to face that threat there. But uh, you know, just, just pause the game for a second here. So as I say, nice move here by Barking Man. Bought over one of his Berserker units to help my uh, army there from his Germanic army. So that was a nice help there bringing that over because, of course, with the fear factor that it's got plus the massive attacking specification it's got as well, that's going to really help. If you notice there, some of the units there are intimidated by nearby troops. I notice there, so their morale will be, will be sapped by that... Um, berserker unit there as they're attacking my Scipio troops but as i say i'm very aware of that enemy cavalry over here that you can see um the pontus and brutio troops moving towards um our germanic ally there 
Over here, you'll see JGP doing extremely well. But as I say, over on the right flank in general, very quiet. This is a nice move by Romex here, bringing four of his pike units over to neutralise any Germanic attack. As we say, um, the pikes and spear units will kill barbarian troops quite quickly so that's why he's put those pontus pike units in uh, there integrated into his julii allies infantry there to neutralize any um attack but as I say i think um barclay man's got some of his cavalry hiding in the woods there ready to attack the julii infantry if he gets a chance okay but meanwhile over here look you can see jgp attacking the enemy troops there in the center but if you notice there there seems to be a gap forming there between the enemy team there can you see there there looks like a gap there a big gap now i, I just wonder if jgp and our germanic ally are thinking of going through that gap and smashing into the flank of the enemy troops on either side of that gap can you see that is a massive gap there in their battle line and that's one thing you definitely don't want is a gap in your battle line there so over here, as I say, my uh, infantry is still holding well against that uh, that massive Brutio attack that's coming in on me. You can see Scorpion King's brought one of his SBQR units over to try and neutralize that enemy cavalry. You can see that enemy cavalry. I'm not sure if they know what they want to do at the moment there. But uh, as I say here, that Berserker unit helping me out no end there. Not just with the uh, attacking specifications. Look how they smash those Brutio infantry up in the air. But also uh, with the fear factor they bring. Right. Okay, so just to show you the attacking tactic, if you notice I've been defensive with my infantry up to now, but if you notice here, I'm bringing my battle damage cavalry in to attack that um, Brutii infantry that is attacking my infantry, but at the same time, I'm going to turn defense into attack. And as I say, my infantry have been defensive all the way through this, but now I'm going to attack that Brutii infantry as well as my cavalry hitting them. Okay, so just watch this here. You can see my cavalry just coming into the frame now. And now, bang! I'm now attacking with my infantry. Surge attack onto that enemy Brutio infantry. Can you see my infantry surging forward into that Brutio infantry? Now look at the enemy cavalry that was in behind us here, targeting the, the Berserker unit. Can you see they're targeting Barkley Man's Berserker unit there with all that cavalry on? Bang! And smash as they charge in there, trying to kill that Berserker unit. Whoa, what a hit that was there by the enemy team there with that cavalry. And there's one man left. Barkley Man's got one man left in that um, Berserker unit there. So that was an effective cavalry charge there. But as I say, you can see my Scipio infantry surging forward into the enemy Brutio infantry there, as well as my cavalry hitting them at the same time. Okay, so um, we managed to rout a lot of that Brutio infantry there with that surge attack of infantry and my cavalry going in there as well. That's at the last of that Berserker unit has now been killed. Okay. And you can see Romex now pulling those pike units back. Maybe to reform the line there is what I'm thinking there. As I'm moving forward here trying to attack and finish off those Brutii troops. You've got a couple of um, Scorpion King's SBQR units there. Right now here you'll see those 121-man um, um, warband spear units there. Look holding up the enemy infantry quite well okay that unit's routed there but they're still holding up the enemy as i say underestimated units these warband spear units are okay and you've got a berserker unit in there as well plus you've got an sbqr unit and you've got some more sbqr units jumping in as well there okay but uh, germanic troops are holding up quite well there i think um those uh, that group of enemy troops meanwhile over here you'll see that uh, our, our allies troops here look like they might be moving around the flank of that enemy julii infantry there okay so there's a, a lot going on here i got a feeling that um both barkley man with his 15 infantry and um jgp here may well attack that enemy julii force and those pontus pikemen there on our right flank as i say it's been very quiet on the right flank up to now but uh, now may well be the time that it's going to actual f actually fire up okay so here as i say I'm moving my uh, Scipii infantry forward into that Brutii infantry. You can see, as I say, Romax moving his pike units back. As I said, I'm thinking he's going to reform those pike units there as uh, we're taking out the uh, the enemy Brutii troops here. Okay, so you can see us moving forward here. There's a, an Amok chariot unit going into my infantry there. Make no mistake, he'll be killing a lot of my infantry there. But you can see I'm still moving forward, trying to take out those last Brutio units there. You can see those last Brutio units, including that Brutio general there, trying to move forward. You can see Romex has 
um, set up his pikes there but over here you'll see that those Germanic troops we were looking at earlier have been routed now by a concerted Brutii infantry attack and those Pontus pike attacks there so this is bad news for us um, a lot of our units has been routed there and you can see Scorpion King's general is in danger but meanwhile over on the right flank here I thought this was a great tactic can you see JGP holding and pinning the forward units of the enemy troops while our Germanic ally and some more of JGP's SBQR units are getting around the flank of the enemy troops here can you see he's got cavalry around the flank there as well um, this is a great tactic, as I say, pinning and holding the forward units with Germanic troops as well as SBQR troops while they take the rest of their SBQR troops and Germanic troops around the flank. You've already got Germanic cavalry in behind the enemy team. Remember, we weakened their cavalry so much earlier on in the battle that uh, I think we've got a massive cavalry advantage now. I can't see um, any other um, enemy cavalry on the battlefield at all there. So... Um, as I say, we've got a big cavalry advantage at this stage of the battle. Okay, so here you'll see... I'm just trying to finish off these last three um, Brutio units. Right, can you see Romex moving more pike units here to face my Scipii army? Okay, well, I don't want to take on those long pikes head on. As a lot of you know, a lot of you that watch our battle videos, you know I don't want to fight, attack those pikes head on because those pikes will kill loads of my men before I can even get close to them there but over here you'll see um scorpion king um sr's spqr army there fighting the enemy brutio troops right here you can see that look but you can see just look at the number of brutio troops there attacking scorpion king's spqr troops there and his general is uh, under big attack as well and you've got those pontus pikemen as well there charging forward but over here on our right flank it looks like our teammates are doing really good i can see the enemy julio general has been routed and as i say um jgp's sbqr units plus the germanic infantry are all pushing in there on the enemy troops there look at that uh, germanic cavalry charge there remember they got a massive cavalry charge bonus there as they charge and there's sbqr units of jgp's going in behind the enemy troops as well like, and bang as he smashes in there I think that there's a good chance we could route all the enemy troops here on this right flank. Look at those Germanic troops moving forward there. Oh my gosh. So JGP and Barclay Man have done a fantastic job on our right flank. They have routed all the Julii infantry and the Pontus Pikemen that were there on the right flank. So well done to JGP and Barclay Man there. Uh, did extremely well against uh, a really good um, couple of players there. So, uh, well done to them. Now, if they can bring their uh, units over, their victorious units over now to help Scorpion King and myself. As I say, you can see loads of enemy troops still left here. Now, as I say, I didn't want to face those Pontus um, pikemen head on. So, I've moved some of my units around the flank. If you notice, I've thrown a couple of units into those pikemen to try and hold and pin them there. So, they won't move over to their flank to stop me moving around the flank, if you see what I mean. But I'm going to charge my infantry over there to try and help... Um, Scorpion King um, with his SBQR infantry against those um, enemy Brutii troops there. Can you see how I'm running past those uh, forward pike units there? But I've thrown a couple of my Scipio units into those pike units to try and pin and hold them as my Scipio troops move on through there to try and help uh, Scorpion King's SBQR troops. But as you can see, our allies now, our victorious allies, are moving over from the right flank over to this left flank now to help us it was almost like two distinct battles in this game scorpion king and myself fighting on the left flank and left center where barkley man and jgp were fighting on the right flank and right center there so it kind of like broke up into two battles if you see what i mean but here you can see a lot of pontus pikemen left there and a lot of brutii infantry there and i can see some of my units starting to rout already they've been fighting for a long time here comes some germanic cavalry charging in there look like, Bang! As Barkley Man's cavalry charged in there. That was a nice hit into that Brutio infantry. That's good news for us. I think a Brutio general's just been killed. So that, that is really good news for us. And you can see a lot of the Brutio infantry is starting to rout now as our allies are as our victorious allies move over from the right to the left flank there. And you can see now that we're starting to um 
impact onto their uh, remaining infantry. Right, you can see here, uh, Romex has done a good job, put a battle line out of solid pikes there to try and repel our attack, but we've got round the flank, we've got him behind him here. He's got some of his Brutii allies trying to um, neutralise our attack in behind him there, but he's only got a few there, so I think our allies will charge in, pin and hold those pikes while we get in behind and attack those pikes from behind. Now remember, Pontus morale is not very good. You get a few of those pike units starting to rout, and you could get a mass rout going here. That's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for here. If we could just get a few of those pike units to rout. Now, if we start hitting them in the rear as well as the front, there. Let's pause the game for a second. As I say, look at those pikes there, and our men are trying to fight down those pikes to kill the man on the other end. As I say, always a, a, a formidable thing to do there. Um, but if you notice, can you see intimidated by nearby enemy? Okay, you can see that intimidated by nearby on enemy, intimidated by nearby enemy. Now they've um, Barclay Man's used all his berserkers up here, look. But his night raiders. Remember what we talked about earlier? The night raiders have got morale sapping abilities, so they're literally sapping the morale away from enemy troops. Sir, that's why when you see intimidated by enemy troops, that's their morale being sapped away. Okay, just look at our troops. They're trying to fight down those pikes to kill those Pontus pikemen there head on. You can see how those long pikes really keep our men at bay there. And we're just suffering casualties, look, and not doing anything to them. Um, but luckily, we have got troops in behind those Pontus pikemen. And as I say, if we can get a few of those pikes to start routing, I think we could get a mass route going of the Pontus pikemen. There you go. Okay, so just to let you know, Romex hasn't admitted defeat. Okay, he hasn't admitted defeat so far, but that was just a mass rout of Pontus Pikemen there. As we know, their morale's not very good, and as I say, you get a few of those Pikemen routing there, and you've got a good chance of getting a mass rout going. So, it looks like our um, our team has managed to um, <coughs> to go on to win the battle there, and that's made uh, the games one game each. So, that was uh, that's pretty good. Over here on the right flank, as I say, JGP... And um, Barkley Man did extremely well there against the uh, enemy team they were facing. If you notice, there wasn't a lot going on over on that right flank for a large amount of the battle. But then, all of a sudden, bang, it seemed to happen there. And um, Barkley Man and JGP struck well there. As we move across the battlefield here, you can see more dead. You can see Chariot dead there. As we move across the battlefield... You can see there's cavalry there, a lot of cavalry there, Julioid cavalry dead as you move further along the battlefield here. As I say, uh, when you see the big piles of dead, you know that's where the most intense part of the fighting has happened there. And as you move across here, you can see a lot of dead there laying in the snow. As you move over here, you can see the intense fighting here. You can see that just by the piles of dead there on our left centre. And then over here on our left flank there, you see, look at that, you can see the massive, looks like a lot of cavalry dead there. That does look like a lot of cavalry. I don't know if that's where we caught them, where we did the ambush, or was the ambush further over here? This could well have been the ambush there. I just thought you might have found it interesting to see how um, the Arcanoi can hide, and if you combine them with the cavalry, they can be quite effective on the uh, on the battlefield. But I haven't seen an ambush like that for many, many years. So uh, here you can see I've got one, two, uh, three, four, five. I've got six battle damage units left. That's all I've got. That's the entirety of my army, six battle damage units. Scorpion King, look, has got one... Uh, one there, two, and three. I think he's just got three units left. The other SBQR units, I think, are JGPs. Yeah, those are JGPs. So Scorpion King's only got three units left there. So that just goes to show how much this was a real battle of attrition and how close this battle was there. So um, I thought uh, everybody played well there. And here you can see the Germanic troops uh, there are the chosen axemen charging in there. So, uh, as I say, well done to um, Barkley Man there. As I say, uh, without any archers in this battle, remember we said no archers in this battle for something a bit different. Barkley Man could bring 15 Germanic infantry and 5 cavalry. So, it's an interesting army build there. And as I say, you can see, um, as I say, our team is. Uh, has managed to go on to the battle and has evened the battles up between the clans. As I say, G O T W. 
and beat us uh, the game before this and we've won this one so one all okay first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game I thought everybody played really well uh, so really well played guys uh, great battle and I was surprised to see that it was an average battle that's what really surprised me to see an average battle and how often do you ever see uh, two clans fighting each other these days very rare highest kills in the game goes to brotherhood member JGP 1736 kills so really well done to him as I say him and Barky Man did really well on that right flank there they worked really well together there uh, so well done to GOTW Biatch probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to there but I thought he played well over on that uh, that right flank uh, well done to Romex there, GOTW Romex. Highest kills in his team with Pontus. Some people say Pontus is a lesser 31k faction, but handled properly, it can be a very powerful 31k faction. So well done to Romex. Well done to Leanbard there, got some good kills as well. Always aggressive, always leading the charge of any team that he's in. So well done to Leanbard. And well done to Biggest, probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to there. But I thought he played well as well. So well done, GOTW. It was nice to see four of you on the battlefield. Let's just say it's a nice, um, friendly rivalry between us. My kills, 1,557. Not bad. I was quite pleased with that, really. That was uh, quite good kills. Uh, well done, Scorpion King. Possibly didn't get the kills that he wanted to there. But uh, as I say, I thought that was a great old-school ambush with the Arcani and our cavalry hitting their cavalry. I just thought that was interesting for you to watch. Well done to JGP. As I say, highest kills in the game. And well done to Barkley Man. Got some good kills with Germania. And as I say, without having archers in the game, look, he could bring uh, a different Germanic army than what he may have normally bought. So it was nice to see 15 infantry involved in that Germanic army. So really well played. As I say, um, lately I've been putting older battles on from our BH um, archives. Um, there so this is a new battle only fought last night and it's just to say well done to GOTW I thought they played extremely well there and as I say they beat us the game before this and we've managed to win this game so and that was it then we all left so one game each I think all honours were satisfied there and um, it was a really exciting battle hope you enjoyed this battle if you did please give us a thumbs up look forward to seeing you soon and bye for now